Hey you guys, this is a Mocha Boy from RC Groups. Wanted to spend a little bit of time going over a Minim OSD setup. Uh, so we're going to get this connected to the computer and um, load up a new firmware. and uh, Just flash this unit with a new firmware. So just to get started, uh, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a, a USB cable with, uh, I believe that's a mini, mini B-type um, plug. Uh, you're going to need an FTDI breakout board. Uh, you can pick these up at SparkFun. They're about 20 bucks. Uh, if you're a little tight on cash, you can um, pick up one of the FTDI cables on eBay and you know just rip out the guts and then just expose the pins. It's going to be a little bit more work, but you know you can probably do that for about five dollars. But this is the actual interface chip that's uh, going to get that's going to provide a serial link between your computer and uh, the Minim OSD. So this is the board. Um, a couple of di there are a couple of different versions of this board. This particular board is version 0.1, so it's one of the earlier uh, schematics for the board. Um, you can tell that uh, it's one of the earlier boards because I'm pretty sure I don't see a regulator anywhere on here. There, there was an issue with some of the earlier boards where uh, it started to heat up if you powered if you fed power into the analog side so you know for instance like a 12 volt rail and then powered a uh, the, the digital side you know using 5 volts there were some problems with overheating they they've been pretty much remedied in in um, some of the latest builds but uh, for this particular board you can see that the solar pad for powering the analog side from the digital side is soldered and uh, just one other note here, on the other side of this board, there's another set of jumper pads right there. So if you're running a PAL system instead of NTSC, you're going to need to just jumper, uh, solder, drop a little blob of solder right there. So no big issue. <clears throat> um, now as far as the OSD is concerned, again, it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not an OSD system in the sense of, uh, you know, something like a REMZB or Easy OSD that's a combination of a flight control system as well as uh, something that pulls information from the uh, from the IMUs. Uh, essentially what this is is two components. Uh, you've got the CPU, the processor, and you've got a video chip, uh, a Max video chip. So from the digital side you're getting Mavlink data pumped in from the flight controller uh, it's parsing all of that information, packaging it up, uh, running some calculations, and then overlaying that data uh, onto the video stream and then outputting that out to camera. So that's how that works. Now, the first thing we have to do is we've got to get the uh, firmware loaded on here. And the way that you do that is you hook this up into the breakout board. Now, this comes with six pins, and this is, uh, well, the breakout board anyway comes with six pin female headers. So, I mean, this is pretty simple. All you have to do is match up um, the VCC with the VCC. So, let's see, that should be the third pin, and always double check. Yep, third pin's the hot rail. One, two, three, third pin is the hot rail on this side, so just plug that in. And you're all set. And then this plugs into this side. And just a note there, um, just a word of warning, uh, you always want to plug in the cable first before, you want to plug the cable into the component first before you plug this into the computer. If you plug this into the computer, you've got, uh, you've got a hot plug. And what can happen in high static environments is you can get an arc and then just end up shorting out a component. I've had that happen to me a couple times and couldn't figure out why and, um, until I saw the spark. So just a word of caution there. So once that's all set up, uh, we can just plug this into the computer and uh, download the firmware and get everything flashed. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to need to do is grab the configuration tool as well as the binaries that we're going to flash, um, the, the binaries that contain the firmware that we're going to flash onto the Minimo SD. So uh, just pop into Google and we're going to type in Minim OSD Extra. 
Now, just a quick word about the different firmwares. There is a MinimOSD project as well as a MinimOSD-Extra project. The Extra project is run by a great guy named Gabor Zoltan, and I apologize if I butchered your name there, but a really dedicated developer has been working with the, uh, the core developers to extend the features and functionalities of MinimOSD. Great work, and you know he's been monitoring the thread over at DIY Drones, so he's very active there. So yeah, it'll be the first link that comes up and it shows wh where we are is the uh, the Google code site. Just to give you a quick tour of the site here and how it's all laid out. If you uh, just want to grab the files, those are going to be under downloads and um, there's the tested official release as well as the configuration tool for the tested release. And then there's the pre-beta, pre-release beta version he he tests these and you know these work out pretty well so anytime anyone reports anything he's pretty quick to get these changes uploaded into uh uploaded into the site so anyway this is the uh the firmware for the pre-release version and then this is the configuration tool for versions four uh, release 455 and up uh there's also a wiki now it would definitely do you well to spend some time uh, going through this and uh, getting comfortable with all of the different panels and features and functions and believe me there is a lot this this osd can show a lot of information you're not going to use it all but it's all there if you want to so some really great information there and good documentation if there are bugs and reports uh, i'm sorry if there are bugs that you need to report go ahead and uh, just use the issues uh, tracker here now if you want to take a look at the source code that's over on this tab here you come into browse and then uh, just expand the trunk, and then you'll see all of the different branches and repositories for uh, <clears throat> for the different firmwares. And um, you know, if you know code, you can, or if you know C, you can come in and you know take a look and see how things were set up. Uh, there's some pretty funky things that you have to do for things like RSSI coming from uh, FreeSky receivers. Yeah, they only output RSSI on PWM, and the only way to get that onto a MinimOSD is to uh, make some changes, some pretty low-level changes to the code in one of these files, and then solder a pin onto the MinimOSD. That's all documented in a DIY drones uh, thread, but I'll leave that for somebody else much more experienced than me to explain. Anyway, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to grab these files, come back over to downloads, and we're going to download this firmware and this configuration tool. <clears throat> okay, so let's just tuck these away someplace where we can get to them. Yeah, I mean, that's coming up as uh, at one because I've already downloaded this, but anyway. So let's see, let's come into the configuration tool. We'll get this expanded onto the desktop. Extract all. Okay, so we've extracted the configuration tool, and this is what's actually going to allow us to uh, update the firmware. <clears throat> Go ahead and just run that executable file. Now, just a couple of quick things with the way that this is set up. Um, if you're in the United States and you're using NTSC cameras and televisions, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, so the default is PAL. You're going to want to make sure that um, NTSC is set. Otherwise, you're going to get some clipping in your in your video. Uh, now, an interesting thing about the way that that the that the, this is set up anytime you make these changes you've got to go ahead and save that current tab to that seemed uh seems to have clipped off there um go ahead and save the tab to uh to the minimo sd uh now as far as the panels are concerned your configuration panel this is where you're going to configure uh raw values for rssi and um your toggle switch behavior let me explain what this does there, there's uh, three views that you can get off, on, and option two. So the way the toggle panel works is when you toggle your switch, it starts to rotate through the different panels. And then when you untoggle the switch, it'll stop 
on whatever panel you're on. This is really great in situations where you just want to cruise, you don't need to see your GPS or distance from home, and you just want to shut everything off. Uh, it's also handy if, because again, there's a lot of information that you can display. Um, so what you can do is you can have, you know, everything in, uh, you know, the kitchen sink, and then maybe just a slimmed down version on panel two. Uh, the the point is you can you can do both, or you know you can show as little information as you want. You can show as much information as you want. So just going through the screen, uh, you've seen a lot of this already if if you've had a chance to review this. But uh, you can show your call sign, airspeed, ground speed. Uh, your efficiency, throttle percentages, and this is handy just to know where you're at um, thrust-wise, for instance. Like maybe maybe you're you need 70% throttle all the time just to keep your bird in the air. Might be time to take a look at uh, some new motors. <clears throat> uh, power, satellite lock, uh, GPS is enabled, and yes, it believe it or not, uh, your barometric pressure sensor does come with a temperature reading. A lot of, for some reason, that's not documented a lot, but uh, yeah, you can get temperature off of your flight controllers. Uh, you have amperage, voltage, latitude and longitude, RSSI, your signal strength, um, waypoint number, your distance to the next waypoint, uh, directional area, uh, excuse me, directional arrow to home, what mode you're flying in, stable acro, um, auto, alt altitude hold. Uh, you have a compass rose here as well. Uh, this is your artificial horizon and um, your, I believe this is your roll rate or your roll uh, angle. Uh, so you have your distance from home here. Might this, I'm not sure, oh, I don't recognize this one. Um, what your home altitude is, and this is also really important. Uh, especially if you're doing long distance flights, you always want to make sure that you're recording your home altitude because if, uh, if you know, let's say your fail safe kicks in, um, you want to make sure that uh, you're feeding good numbers into fail safe so that it returns at a height that it's not running into power lines, for instance. Um, and then uh, let's see, you also have your time aloft, and this is you know this is really handy. This is one of the nicer things that I that I liked. Uh, this starts counting from the moment you turn on, but then it resets when you hit, I believe, 20% throttle. It's a really great feature because you don't have to worry about this setting and resetting because, um, I mean, there's no other way to do it. But yeah, the the, the code is smart enough to know that, you're, hey, I'm about to take off, reset this time, and uh, start recording. So now the really nice thing about this configuration tool is that you can you can move these items around, you can turn items on and off, uh, so, you know, ha have a blast, enjoy this part, see which pieces are, uh, of, in of information are fun or are useful for you. By the time I was done with this and got comfortable with everything, I, I came down to um, distance from home, airspeed, throttle, GPS lock, uh, la latitude and longitude, and maybe just one or two other pieces of information. But a lot of really great stuff here. Now, as you're making your changes, if you make a change to this panel, panel two, you've got to do that and then save your current information to the uh to the firm i'm sorry to the uh to the component now if you come over to panel one make your changes again save your current tab and or uh, over to the component and then the same thing for configuration so uh, you just remember save current tab save current tab save current tab and then if there's ever a question of what's out there you can uh, just read from the osd <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh flash this firmware now, this is a pretty straightforward process um, coming over into options, update firmware. You're going to navigate to the firmware. So that's on my desktop. And that's this hex file. You're going to open that. Oops. Oh, I just realized I didn't uh, plug this in. So give me two seconds to plug this in. Okay. Looking good. Now, I believe my FTDI cable is on COM7. So let's do that again. Options, update firmware, navigate to the folder where the hex file is. Go ahead and open that. And step away from your computer. Don't touch anything and uh, you know, definitely don't interrupt the, um, the component in any way because if something happens during the flashing process, 
you never know. Anyway, so this is done and we're all set. Um, I'm going to leave, okay, I'm going to leave these panels where they are at right now, um, but I'll definitely come back to this. Let's see, video mode, interesting. Okay, so that didn't take, so let's set that to NTSC and let's just start saving tabs. NTSC, that's good. And yeah, that's it. We're all set. The uh, Minim OSD is now running uh, Minim OSD Extra. And uh, if you got one of the clones, it'll probably have uh, you know a Chinese version on there. So you're definitely going to want to get that off. Um, unless you read Chinese and that's useful for you. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That, that should cover this part. Um, going to move on and uh, configure a couple of the other components. But um, if you have any questions, just comment and post below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.